Hello, and the last session of the day. So, still enough energy for this session? Yes, it will be a, it will be a tough one, trust me. So, PowerShell and MS Graph API advanced from zero to hero. My name, Michael Seidel, I'm from Austria, and immediately we need, we need some, some off topic. Uh, usually when I'm on a different continent and saying I'm from Austria, something strange happening. Um, no, I'm not from Australia, I'm from Austria. So, to make it sure, that's about where we are right now. This is not Austria, Austria is over there, okay? So we have those and no kangaroos. So, we now put Austria back on the map. So, let's continue. I have a Microsoft MVP since 2015, mainly in data center and cloud management. I'm doing automation consulting since more than 10 years. Um, I founded Automator, my own company, doing helping customers automate the IT processes with PowerShell, of course, uh, with Orchestrator, with PowerShell, with Azure Automation, and also providing a self-service portal for Microsoft Automation, Azure Automation, PowerShell, whatever. So that's my daily business working with PowerShell and mainly working with Graph API. Um, I have a blog, TechGuy80, or automator.com, and the same on GitHub. So every ex uh, sample you see today will be on GitHub, maybe today, maybe next week. Let's see. But you don't need to make any screenshots. Everything you see today will be on GitHub sooner or later. And if you want to be uh, in contact with me, you want to chat with me, uh, do it on LinkedIn, please. I might have different social media profiles, but I mainly use LinkedIn, nothing else. So if you want to stay in contact with me, uh, happy to connect uh, and say hi on LinkedIn. So the agenda for today, the good news, one point already uh, finished, the introduction. Next thing is um, we talk a little bit of Graph API basics, authentication, everything, but this is not the main focus for today. Uh, the main things are how to be a hero in Graph API using paging, filter, select, and batch requests. That's the most fun. Who ever tried to, uh, who is working with Graph API? Hopefully everyone, yes. Who tried a batch request? Yes. Good, okay, so some basics. Uh, Microsoft always tell us uh, Graph API and is related to Microsoft 365. In my opinion, it's, it's one API to, to Microsoft Cloud, so or also to Azure. So you can do a lot of stuff related to Azure with Graph API. So for me, it is one API to the Microsoft Cloud, not only related to Microsoft 365, but also to, to Azure. Why use Graph API? Uh, you don't need a PowerShell model. And that's also the topic for today. We don't use the Graph API PowerShell model today. We use native PowerShell code, invoke REST method, because then you can use those techniques um, what I'm trying to show you today. Um, I also prefer working with native Graph API. I work also with other APIs. Because um, in the last 10, 15 years, I had a lot of PowerShell models which has been deprecated. I need to rebuild anything, and the invoke REST method will not be gone. So that's one reason for me using the, the, the native Graph API, the native way to work with Graph API. Uh, it's also, you can use it on-prem or in cloud, so it does, it's the same code. It is, you have more functionality over the PowerShell model. There's also a delay for new endpoints, for new features related to the native one and the, the, the PowerShell model. Uh, yes, you have some more line of code because you need to take care about authentication. You need to write the URL, the get, whatever. Yes, but I think it is easy to write and, and if you do it one or, three one or two times, you will get used of it. Um, of course, this is a PowerShell conference or unconference, what we, what we learned in the morning. Um, we use it with PowerShell, but you can use the same methods, same techniques with different programming languages. Uh, so how to use MS Graph API? Mainly you have a REST caller URL, so that's the graphmicrosoft.com v1.0. Uh, v1 so for version one, 
you have then your endpoint. You want to talk about users, groups, teams, to do Azure app registrations, whatever. And you do a get, a post, a put, a patch, or delete. Everyone is familiar what get, post, put, patch, delete is doing? Yes. So get, give me something, post, put, a patch, write, create, update something, and delete, of course, remove. If you're new to Graph API or you want to, to, to test those things, I'm showing you later today, use the Graph Explorer. It's a web GUI from Microsoft to learn and to test Graph API. So to build the JSON, to build the, the comments, to, to, to get the correct URLs. Um, and of course, when you have to work with Graph API, make sure you know how to write a JSON. Uh, JSON, JSON script, JSON variable, JSON file, whatever. Um, also, get familiar how to build a JSON, maybe dynamically, so not just write the lines, but build it dynamically. So, this is heavily used if you work with Graph API. So, how to authenticate? Um, there are two ways to authenticate from your PowerShell script to the Graph API to, to do anything. So there's an Azure app registration or the system user assigned identities. So uh, Microsoft prefers the system and user assigned identities. So you have a, a, a user, in, in mainly a user in, in, in Azure. This user gets some roles, permissions, and this user is used to connect to the Graph API. The, the second thing is Azure app registration. So you have an Azure app registration. You give them Graph permissions and you could decide if you want to use a client secret or a certificate to authenticate. If you use Azure app registrations and Graph API permissions, there are two types of permission. The one is the smart one, Spider-Man, um, delegate permission. So if you use delegate permission, you Disadvantage is you need a user to sign in to authenticate. Um, and the permission only, uh, he gets only the permission the user you need to sign in has. So if the user don't have access to whatever mailbox you want to try, he will not have access to it. If you do the same with application permission, and the application grants access to mailboxes, this means I have access to all mailboxes, not what is my use, sorry not what is in my user context, so there is no user in that case. So take care or be aware that application permissions can be very dangerous. It is easier for automation, background and everything, yes, because you don't need any user sign-ins. But if you have an application, uh, if you have an Azure app registration with application permission to, for example, read emails, you can read all emails from your whole tenant, from your whole company. As, as long as the user gets the, the, the client ID, the tenant ID, and the secret, he can do whatever he wants to do with the application permission. Because there is no user authentication, he, 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 he takes the permissions of the app. So take care and make sure you do the right permissions. So, that has been the basics of Graph API, and now it gets interesting. Paging is the first thing, the, the easier one, or the, the, the yeah, basic ones. So, is anybody familiar what paging means in, a, in, in related to an API? Some, ha some, yeah, some. So, usually we, when you call it to get anything from an API, it's not only related to Graph API, a lot of, uh, most of the APIs have a paging. So if you try to get some information, some resources, for example, to get users, you will not get all the objects at once because it would be a lot of overload. For example, you have 10,000 of users and you do a get call, you do not get 10,000 of users, you get 100, 1,000, 10, whatever the API has a standard limit for. This is mainly used to, to performance and, 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 and load, so that you get not everything, just the first batch. Um, and think about that when you start working with any API, implement the paging mechanism from the beginning. 
I had one recent example a few days ago. Um, I think it was a script running for uh, since two or three years. I was not so familiar with paging. I thought not so useful. And I did a sync between a CRM system and an invoicing system to synchronize the contacts to the invoicing system from the, the CRM system. And from the CRM system, I took care about the paging and the invoicing system not. And the script runs and gets all companies from CRM, all contacts from the invoicing system. Is anything missing? Then create it in the invoice system. I get thousands of contacts from the CRM system, hundreds of contacts from the invoice system. It doesn't matter how much contacts I create, I always get 100. What happens? A really mess. Because the sync already thinks, this company doesn't exist. Create, 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 create. So we had hundreds of companies, hundreds of copies, duplicates, um, in an invoicing system. It was not a really good idea. It was really mess to clean those things up. So start thinking about paging from the beginning. So we are now for the first demo. So let's see. First thing, we talked about uh, authentication. Don't do this at home. Don't write your credentials into the code. I'm just doing it for easier uh, demonstrating today, but don't do this at home. At least I put the client secret in a text file so it is not recorded, but don't do it at home. So first thing first, we do authentication. So we get our... Uh, let me see, do we paging? We are paging, here we are. So, uh, first we need to do our authentication, it's always the same. So we now get our token, our bureau token. So, so now I'm a admin and want to get all my users from a tenant. So I write the script invoke REST method, get uh, the user t uh, endpoint, the token, and let's see how many users I have. 100, is, is it readable in the back? Everything good? Yes. So you see, I get 100 users. As um, maybe uh, admin, I think, oh, nice number, we just hit 100 users, yeah. But if you was in that session, you should be suspicious, because anything is wrong here. Why do I get really 100 users? And if you go, see our, our Asia environment and hit a small re, uh, quick refresh. We see 255 users over there. So anything is wrong. We do the same for the group. Oop. And I get 11 groups. That's okay. I know it. Don't tr uh, trust me. So what is the difference between those? We get the first invoke users. We get the result or the context, or that the next link. Uh-huh. When we do the same for the groups, we don't get that all that the next link. We just get the context and the value. Here's the next link. So that's the different one. If paging hits in Graph API and most APIs use the same methods, then you get any, re any special re re response that tells you there is more. Follow that link to get more. So the idea is, if I get those next link, I need to do the same invoke with that link to get the next bunch of 100 users. As long as I do not get a, a next link, then I'm finished. So in our cases, we have 255 users. We need to call it three times. 100, 155. So, do that in, the, in, in uh, paging for beginners. So the first call is, that is the link we get. It's a very encrypted link, so cannot do anything. So we put that in the, in the variable. Call this next link, and let's see, I get the next 100 users. 
But at least uh, next, uh, uh, and, um, this call also gets a next link, so we do the next uh, to the, the next call. And now we should receive 55 users. Yes. So we gone next, next, next until there is no more next. Then we know everything is finished. Um, this is not very handy, to be honest. It's just for, for demonstration how it works. So this can be e done easier. So we do the, uh, when we see the first line, or the first two lines, we do the initial invoke get for the users, and then a while loop until, uh, uh, as long as we get a next link, do the next link, call, 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 until everything is done. So, when we hit that code, we should get 255. Just give me a second. And I put this in a function, and you will see the function on the other examples as well, because I tried to do every call using this paging function to make sure that what I explained a few minutes before with the invoicing and CRM system doesn't happen anymore, because it was a really huge mess. So there is a function that is doing exactly the same what I told you before. It's written by me, it's nothing special. But if you run that, you get also 255 users. So, easy function for paging. Make sure you use it, or you, you take care about paging when you work with Graph API or other APIs. Next one. Uh, filter, and oh, any questions so far? Paging, everything good? Great. Yes? So, in both rest method, it does have a follow rel link. Uh, parameter. Can you use that? You have it? Really? Thanks. So my function is useless? I will give it a try. We have some time. Why not try it now? So, what is it? You see it? I think follow rel link means it deals with redirection. That's that might be true, yeah. Maybe that's not right, but because I also don't, do not see it. But I will try, or maybe you can try it afterwards. But I, I wasn't aware of this. So if it's available, then my function is useless. Definitely. The main message is take care of paging. Don't, if you get a nice number, 100, 1,000, 10, whatever, you should think about, well, that might be not correct. Okay, next thing. Um, filter and search. Uh, the first example was to get everything what is there. But there are a lot of examples to just get a, a specific object. So during the call, you can add filter uh, uh, parameters to only get a subset of results. There are two different ways to use this filter and search. Search is only available for some endpoints. And to be honest, before this session, I have never used it. Uh, uh, I only did it for this session. Because the search is only available for Outlook, so for mail or events, SharePoint, OneDrive, Drive item lists, persons, mainly user objects. Graph connector content, admin search, whatever. The, the, the good thing on search is it, it, it searches through many properties. For example, if you use it for mail, it searches the subject, the email, I think the attachment, the sender, the, the, the recipient, everything at once. Filter is available for any endpoint, and you have to know the property you want to look for, and of course the value. So if I use filter to get a specific user. You need to tell them, give me every user, the given name is whatever. The search searches through an object multiple uh, properties. So first we see the filter. We have our authentication again. As I said before, don't do this at home. Um, so our goal is to find a user where the first name is James. 
Without the knowledge of filtering, there are several ways to deal. So first, get all the users, and then do a where object where the given name is James. Let's do it. We have 43 James in our environment. It's okay, but the bad thing is, we first get all users, and then we do a filtering. The next one is, we do the same again, and with a for each, and give me all the James users. So both ways will work, definitely, but it's not nice. So the filtering in Graph API, let's close this one, looks like this. Directly in the URL, filter given name equal James. So you only get the result from the API what you're looking for. You don't need to get everything and then do the, the filtering on-prem, on as I said. You, you directly get to the API and tell them, give me only a subset of, 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 of objects. So the same result, 43. As I said, why to do it? Don't get everything, because it's a performance and workload thing. Don't get everything and then do filtering. Do it directly in the cloud, in the command, in where you, you query the, the, the UL. You can use um, different operators here. So I have the, the documentation. And I never I do not say that very often, but the documentation related to Graph API is really good for Microsoft. Okay, so use it and see it. And, 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 and if you uh, look for something, go to the, to the learn Microsoft com and, and see the documentation. So there are several operators uh, you can use, equal, non-equal, contains, lower than, whatever. So nearly everything you trying to look for or, or try to, to filter for should be available. So we can do the same with a given, uh, starts with given name, and you see the different, uh, how to write the query. On top we have given name equal James, here it is starts with given name James. And it is absolutely okay, if you start with filtering graph API to uh, get crazy, punch your head against the table, because it is really sometimes very annoying how the filters sometimes react. But if you in in that topic, it really helps and, and increase the performance of your code. And as I said that, if you want to, for example, give me all users where the given name is not James, there is something special. Um, it is documented here that every on every operator where those two Asterisk R is an advanced query. And then your code needs to look a little bit different, and it is this one in the header and this one in the URL. And if you do it, it will work. So for every advanced query, just remember to add those two things to the header and the one to the URL. Um, and now you think, it is too complicated, let's go back to get every user and do the filtering on, on, in PowerShell as I know. Can understand, but there is, if, if, you, if you go a further step, you can do really cool thing with filtering and everything. So uh, we have an example to get members from a group with, with a specific job title. So usually you get all the groups, you get all the members, and then see what is the job title, whatever, so it's a lot of lines of code. That would be the usual way. But with filtering, it is just one line. It is, get me the group, then get me the members, and give me only the members with the job title equals DevOps demo. And when my authentication is still up, we should get four users. Yes. So, yes, it can be hard to use the filtering to, to, to get the correct syntax, but it is, in my opinion, worth the effort to, to get a 
better performance in your scripts. The next one is search. As I said, it's the first time I used it to, to, to prepare my, my session today, and it may, might be the last one, to be honest. Um, I, I don't need that really in my, in my daily business. But as I said, search is mainly for uh, Outlook, so for email events, for example, and you have to use delegated permission. So you cannot search over everything. You cannot can search in your user context. And what does it look like is you have to build a search body. So you see, I want to search the message because the, 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 the post message will always send to search query, not to the identity or endpoint you're looking for. You, you, you send your search to a specific search endpoint and in the body, there is the search conditions. So to look at the time. So now I uh, search for Jasmine's uh, uh, mailbox. She's a colleague of mine. And I look for DevOps. And I think as Jasmine is only uh, um, uh, responsible for invoicing and everything, she's not really a techie. So there is no email about DevOps. So total is zero. But when we search for invoice, I should get a little a bit more result. Yes, we hit 436 emails with invoice in it. And when we see the result, we see the, the hits container, then we see the hits, and we see the summary, and we get the first one, so we don't summary. And we see the, oops, we see the mail body. What is it? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the invoice mentioned above is still unpaid for seven days. So in this case, we see the email. So we see the objects and everything. That's how it works. So in this case, I haven't said where to look. I just said, look for invoice and look for message. In this case, it was in the body. It would also be the same if it would be in the subject or in the, the sender and the recipient. It, it, it searches the whole message object. Okay, so next one is select. A quick one. Um, Microsoft is doing, a, in my opinion, a, a good job. If you get, let's stay at the user example, uh, if you get a user object, you just get 10, 12 properties. A user object in Azure has, I think, 70 objects, uh, 70 properties, so city, street, last login, whatever, everything. But you just get the 10 most used Microsoft decided. It is related to performance as well. So I had an example for, uh, I worked with ServiceNow uh, recently, and also get the users, and they provide every property for every user object. To get 1,500 users, it took around 10 minutes. By selecting just those properties I needed, it took five seconds. So that's the, the, what I want to show. And what, what the Graph API is, is also different. Um, you need, as I said, you just get 12 or 10 properties. So let's get the users and see what we get. Uh, authentication is gone, so give me a second. So you get those properties when you just call the users. Um, there is no uh, select everything. So you cannot go and call anything to get me every property. You need to define it. So the first thing is you can say, oh, just give me the display name. Then I get just the display name. Um, for example, the city was not one of those properties. Um, every endpoint has a good documentation what properties are available. So if you need any specific property, you also need to define that in the, in the URL. So now we get the city, and now we get display name as city. So be aware that if you get any results, you will not get every property. And if you look for a specific property, go to the documentation and see how the property name is. Badly, there is no way to just get everything. 
you need to type the property what you like. So and now we get to the fun part. Batching. That's our superpower of, of performance uh, when it comes to read and of course if you want to write data to the graph API. Uh, if you go to the, to the supermarket and see a sign, buy one and get 20, you will grab it. Make sure, right? So we can do the same in Graph API. So you can combine up to 20 requests in one request. So what we did right now is get a user, that is a request. Get the group, that is a request. Um, get, what else did we get? Uh, that is one, everything is one single request. Those can be packed and sent at once. So our performance should increase by 20. Um, you can also do a sequencing, so create the user, create the group, create the next user, so you can define the, the, the sequence and you can define what comment depends on a different one. The bad thing is you cannot work with any result in one batch, so you cannot create a group, get the ID and use it for the next one, so that's a, a second batch. And batching is not bypassing any throttling or limits for Graph API. So you still have to deal with the throttling and limits. I will not talk about that today because that can be a, a session for itself. Uh, there is a documentation from Microsoft about limits and how many requests you can send, but not for today. That's too, too much. So, and now we get to the fun part. So, I will do that a little bit. So, once again, authentication. So usually when we want to create a user, that's the body for it. So we create the user, Adam Wagner, with a mail and password. We create that and that's it. So the output should be the user. So we created a user with that body. The next thing is how to create a group, the same. Build the body and send that to Graph API. The response is we created a group. And now how does the code look like if you want to send that in a batch request? That is the get. So that is now the code, how the batch looks like. I tried to do it a little bit smaller to have everything on one side. Is it still readable? No? Bad. Okay, the idea is we put everything we get, we need to, to send, in one big JSON body. So in our case, I want to create a user and a group in one call. So we put everything in, so that's one call, that's the second one. And it's just, as I said at the beginning, try to learn JSON. It's just JSON file. Um, and those informations are the same we had above, it's just, put in the request and ID, and everything is stored here. You can do a post and a get and a patch in the same batch request. It, it, it is defined on every single request in that body. Is it a post, is it a get, what is the endpoint, what is the header, and what is the body, okay? So, that's the body, we send it. Have you sent it? Now we send it. And you also get a response of what you've done. Oh, I sent it twice. You see it for every, every, uh, uh, um, every request in that body, I get a, uh, an, an, an extra return. As I did it twice, I get an error. So if I see the body, oops, and the error, I get the message for every request I send in that code that the mail nickname already exists and the user principal name already exists. So every, so also the, the error handling is the same or maybe the, uh, nearly the same, just in a, in a different value or different different response. But every request you send in in a whole batch is separately, and you will get a response separately. Okay, and now we have a game too move on a bit before the end. 
I got some chocolate from Austria. And what we do is, I have prepared a user creation. One time is with a for each. So for each user, we send a request, we send a request, we send a request. And the same we do with batching. And now I want to know from you, of course, what would be the faster, that, that's easy. But I need one brave, do we have a woman here? No, one brave man who will join me on stage and hit me to, to stop the time. Who is gonna be? Come on, you get a chocolate. <laughs> you. Sorry, I have to force you. Um, you will hit that button. You take your smartphone. I will count one, two, three. You will start. And we agree to 20 seconds. And when 20 seconds gone, you hit the buzzer and I stop the script. Okay, so do you say start? I say one, two, three, and on three, I start the script, you hit the, the, the smartphone. So what we do is, we do the first thing in a for each. So for every, I have a, a, a for each written to create 696 users with some first name, last names, and then we do it for each, and for each user we send uh, the post to create the user. What do you think? How many users do we create in 20 seconds? In which, in which first method? In the, in the, in the for each. In the slow one. 150. How many? Single digit. 100. 100? 150? You can win one chocolate, come on. Okay, five? Okay, know your, know your numbers. You need to be honest afterwards, okay? I, I don't remember it. I don't remember it. Excuse me? No, uh, it's a count from the first names. No, come on. It's not that easy. Okay, remember your uh, numbers and be honest afterwards. So, once again, authentication. And so, this, 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 this. And this is then the result, the count for each. So, you ready? Yep. One, two, three. And after 20 seconds, push the button. And I need to cancel the request. How many do we have? Okay. Do you want to do a countdown from five? I can. Five, four, three, two, one. Thanks. So the result is we created 59 users. Who said that number or close? You said 50, you said? I don't have so many chocolates. Let me see, I need to unpack it. You know each other? You want to share? Is it okay? <laughs> there are more pieces inside so you can share it. Okay, next one. So we had 59. Next one is the batch. So authentication that it's not expiring. Zip. And zip. The, is it the batch? Yes. You ready? ready. 20 seconds? Yep. One, two, Three. I haven't asked, what do you think? All of them? How many? 400, 300. How many? Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So, what are the numbers? 400? 350? Okay. Okay. 696. We did all of them. Thanks for your help. Who said all? Guys, you have to share. Because um, I have one more. Uh, I have one more question left. Um, excuse me. Because it was nearly, sometimes it made it nearly to the, to the end, 
But so so that why I'm started uh, stopped it. Yeah. So uh, it takes sometimes 19 seconds, some, sometimes 21 seconds. It depends on, on on internet connection, whatever. So that's why I stopped it. So so do you see the, the difference? 59 to 696 in 20 seconds. Yes. To be honest, you will not create a thousand of users each day, but there might be cases where you use or need to use the batches. And when you build it dynamically with a JSON, like we did here, it is really easy to create those batch structure and to send the information. And as I said at the beginning, yeah, five more minutes, that's good. Uh, you can also use it for read information, not only write, so also for read. So you dramatically increase the performance to read thousands of users using the batch mechanism. Okay, one example I had for one customer in Austria. Um, it is a privately held company with 3,000 uh, employees or so, and the, the boss uh, requested to synchronize the contacts on the shared folders and, and shared mailboxes to his personal contact in Outlook. Okay, I know, uh, I know. Uh, we get the information from shared mailboxes, from any employee databases, and we should think that every once a day uh, in different contact lists, whatever. We talk about 7,000 users. Without batching, it took one and a half hour. With batching, it was done in five minutes. Yes, the, the, the CEO maybe doesn't, matter, doesn't care if it runs one and a half hours in the night or five minutes. But if you need to run it maybe during the day, because there is one contact I miss, I need it now. And you tell the CEO, sure, one and a half hours, it's there. No. In five minutes, it's there. Okay. And also resources. If you run it in Asia Automation, a job, one and a half hours each day costs you money. If you run it five minutes, it costs you less money. And if you see that in other, other automations as well, so batching can really improve your performance. So, as I said, I have one more question. Who is brave enough to tell me where Austria is? <laughs> what? I can do it. <laughs> Next to Germany. <laughs> Next, yeah. Next to Germany, that is good. That is good. <clears throat> okay. Uh, thanks for you. We did it on point. Uh, hopefully it was, beside the chocolate, interesting for you. Um, if you want to be in contact with me, that's the, the QR code for LinkedIn. I'm happy to connect with you all. Um, as I said, all the examples will be on GitHub very soon. Maybe today, maybe when my holiday starts today with my family, so I will be back next week. Uh, lately, next week, the code will be on GitHub. Uh, there is also a Slack space from the uh, summit where the code will be provided. So. It will be definitely on GitHub. That's the session uh, review. So give us your feedback. How do you like the session? Give me a second. How do you like the session? Give us a feedback. You can also do it right now. You don't have to do it anonymously. Um, so last, thank you very much for your time. I know it was a rough top topic at the last session of the day, but thanks again. And have a good summit. Thank you.